Welcome to another edition of Small Talk for You. This morning I wanted to take a look at one of the more important tools in a Small Talk environment, in particular Faro, and that's the system browser. It's the way you enter code into the system and how you read code that's already in the system. And for that matter, it's your main interface into loading code into the system. So let's take a look at it. What you do is go in here into Faro after you've fired it up, left to right click here on the desktop, and the first item, system browser, is the one you want. So let's bring that up. You'll get a little window. I'm going to make this a little bigger because this is a too small a space to work in really. Over here you have packages. If I select one of these you'll find that I get a set of classes which are in there. And notice I've got a hierarchy view already. It's telling me which things have a subclass and superclass relationship. If I right click over here, notice I get management functions for the category. I can add category, I can remove empty ones, I can reorganize this list, I can go and find a particular class. Filing out means a way of exporting. I'm not going to really cover refactoring because refactoring is really a large topic that's suitable for its own screencast. So let's go over one here to this class list. I can select a class and notice that what happens down here is I've got my class definition down here now and I've got all methods selected. So by default if I don't have any category of methods selected it's going to show me all of them. And these are categories of methods. Notice as I select each one it hones in on just the list of methods that are categorized that way. Categories have no inherent meaning from the standpoint of functionality. They're just a signal from the developer to you as to what these methods mean, kind of organizationally. Finally, if I go down here and look at one of these, you notice that I get the actual code. So instead of a method template, I get the actual code for that method, and that's where I would add things in. Notice here in Faro, things are syntax highlighted by default, so you can take a quick look and see what this stuff means. Now, a couple of other things. Up here, when I selected a class, it gave me the instance methods by default. If I select this, it'll give me the class methods by default. Notice here there aren't too many of them. Over here I can select this, and it'll give me whatever documentation exists. In this case, there's not a lot of it, but I've got a nice button for it. Let's go over here to instance again. We'll select a method. Notice this view option. Again, over here I'll pop up the menu. There are a whole bunch of things here. I can get senders and implementers, so I can find out who implements this. Now initialize a bad one to choose for that. Let's choose binding of. Implementers, I can get all the implementers of this method, and it's going to show me all the places in the system that that's been implemented. I can send senders and find all the places it's been sent in the system. And of course, I can hone that in a bit. Notice here I have the option of saying hierarchy senders and hierarchy implementers. All the places just in this subclass and superclass chain, so you notice it's implemented up here in object. So I can kind of hone my selection in on just the things I want to pay attention to. Let's take a look at this view option again. Notice I get a couple of things. Source, which is what I'm looking at. Pretty print, which is going to reformat it. Decompile, which would show me what it would look like without any of the actual source code as if the system had lost its source code. And that's useful if you want to see what the system's actually going to treat the code like as opposed to how you've written it. And view, bytecodes. This is not terribly useful, but it's kind of cool that you can look at what's actually going on in the bytecode engine to see how this code's going to actually run at runtime. Of course, if you don't know the bytecodes, it's not going to be that useful. But you can just get a basic look, and even if you know a little bit of basic assembly, you can take a look at this and kind of get a feeling for what's going on. And that's kind of a basic overview of the Faro browser. Now, I didn't go into any depth. There's a whole lot of other functionality in here. The refactoring in particular is huge, and that's for another screencast. So, that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with whatever small talk you're using.